December 16, 2023, tens of thousands of supporters of Bangladesh's main opposition party took to the streets of the country's capital, Dhaka. Activists of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, or BNP, gathered in front of the padlocked party headquarters entrance. Defying fears and warnings of arrest ahead of the country's national election. I believe that people will boycott the January 7 polls. They won't go to cast their votes. BNP is already out of this farcical poll. Also, people will align with the BNP boycotting this election. The government keeps saying that BNP went into hibernation. We have not. Today is proof of that. Our grassroots have come out on the streets. We will kick out this government onto the streets. As Bangladesh gears up for its national elections on January 7th, 189,000 police personnel have been deployed nationwide to ensure law and order. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is seeking another term, her fourth in a row and fifth overall. Her main opposition, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, the BNP, is boycotting the election, demanding an interim caretaker government. For the past few months, the protests have intensified against Hasina. Violence on the street, thousands arrested, and an unrelenting crackdown against the opposition. What is making the Bangladesh opposition parties boycott the general elections? Has the boycott turned the election into a one-woman show? What's the current political situation in Bangladesh? Can the next elected government revive the country's sinking economy? And more importantly, what is it that the people of Bangladesh want from the government? Let's find out. On January 7th, Bangladesh will hold its 12th national parliamentary elections. Bangladesh's current Prime Minister and the ruling Awami League President Sheikh Hasina launched her party's poll manifesto in the last week of December. Hasina pledged to build a smart Bangladesh if elected for a fourth term in the upcoming elections. The Awami League coined a slogan as the theme for its manifesto. Loosely translated, it reads, Smart Bangladesh, development is visible, now employment will increase. Setting 11 priorities for building a modern, technology-oriented country, it pledges to modernize the healthcare sector with a universal health system. The result of the elections already looks quite predictable. The main opposition parties have boycotted the poll and many of their leaders were jailed. Will that mean the ruling Awami League is all set to be re-elected for a fourth parliamentary term? Critics say that this is not an election, rather uh, no, uh, the Awami League Council uh, in, a, in a national council because they are choosing their own leader from their respective uh, areas. The practice of democracy it is a plural uh, idea, it's a participation of different opinion, but that is missing. In the opposition, uh, you will not find, I don't know who will be the opposition uh, after the election. Probably the independent candidate, many of the independent would form a coalition. And yet, they, the same people, they are the breakaway or uh, they are the people who are from the Aum League or they have the fraternity with the Aum League. Meanwhile, ailing former Premier and the country's first woman Prime Minister Khalida Zia's Bangladesh Nationalist Party is carrying out an anti-election street campaign. Calling for strikes and transport blockades and saying no election under the incumbent government would be fair or neutral. Not just the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party, its allies, an alliance of left parties BAM Ganatantrik Jyot and the Ganatantra Mancha Alliance are also giving the election a miss. Top BNP leaders have been arrested. 
the party says it will not legitimize what it calls a fake election. The BNP and its allies have no faith that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will hold a free and fair election. They called on her to step down and allow the polls to be held under a neutral interim government, a demand that she rejected. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is accused of corruption, human rights abuse, kidnappings, autocratic functioning and more. This then is the backdrop against which the general election in Bangladesh will take place. And as of now, there is hardly any opposition to take on the incumbent. So the candidates on the ballot will all be from the Awami League, its allies or independents. This isn't the first time the BNP has chosen to take a back seat. BNP boycotted the country's general elections in 2014, accusing the ruling Awami League of muzzling the opposition by engineering disappearances and extrajudicial killings of BNP leaders. But notwithstanding its reservations, it did participate in the 2018 general elections. Later, however, the party leaders alleged vote rigging and ballot box stuffing by the Awami League. Cut to the present, BNP is boycotting the 2024 election after its demands for an interim government for the polls was rejected by the government. The BNP has been out of power since its defeat in the 2009 election and considers the poll boycott as a form of protest. So how will the 2024 elections boycotted by the major opposition party affect Bangladesh? Will there be free and fair elections? I don't think that will be a free and fair election, uh, but uh, if you see, um, there is, of course, the vote share of Awami League is high in, in, in the context of Bangladesh. And I always say this election is free from opposition, uh, fair for a ruling party or Awami League, and participatory by the beneficiary. So, of course, the beneficiary uh, of this uh, government definitely join the, you know, they will cast their vote irrespective of their economic uh, background. Maybe the poor, uh, many poor benefits uh, who get benefit, they will vote. And those people who are, you know, uh, really benefited by this government, they will vote. Bangladesh is one of the world's most densely populated countries. It was formerly East Pakistan, where in 1949, the Awami League was formed. The party under the leadership of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman led the struggle for independence from Pakistan. On the 16th of December 1971, the territory of East Pakistan broke away from Pakistan Helped by India in its war for liberation against Pakistan, it went on to become Bangladesh. West Pakistan became the Pakistan we know today. On 12th January 1972, Mujibur Rahman, the father of Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, assumed the position of Prime Minister in Dhaka. He introduced one-party rule. Three years later, on the 15th of August 1975, Mujibur Rahman was assassinated, along with most of his family, in a military coup. The years that followed after Mujibur's assassination saw a series of abortive coups. Eventually, in the late 1970s, General Ziaur Rahman, the husband of present opposition chief Khaled Azia, became the de facto leader. But after his assassination, Bangladesh experienced many years under various shades of military rule. The first elections considered free and fair were held in 1991, and Begum Khaled Azia, Zia's widow, became the prime minister. Although democracy was restored in 1990, the political scene remained volatile. Politics in Bangladesh has long been dominated by the bitter rivalry between two women.
Sheikh Hasina of the Awami League and Khaled Azia of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. Both have been Prime Ministers at various times since 1991. Their hostility stems in part from differences over who played a greater role in Bangladesh's independence struggle. They sank their differences when military ruler Hussein Muhammad Ershad was in power from 1982 to 1990. But since then, they've become uncompromising rivals. On the 23rd of June 1996, Sheikh Hasina was sworn in as the country's Prime Minister. She has served four terms as Bangladesh Prime Minister, three of them consecutively since 2009. The Awami League led by Hasina has a pan-Bangladesh presence and has always insisted on promoting secular, democratic and progressive values. Hasina was the target of an assassination attempt in 2004 when she was in the opposition. In 2007, she was arrested for corruption and charged with murder by the military-backed caretaker government. In the 2006 to 2008 period, Bangladesh had a political crisis when its generals imposed a state of emergency. Since 2009, under Sheikh Hasina, once one of the world's poorest countries, the Muslim-majority nation achieved credible economic success. A World Bank report says extreme poverty decreased from 9% in 2016 to 5% in 2022 in Bangladesh. But critics say the economic success has come at the cost of democracy and human rights. They allege that Hasina's rule has majorly been marked by repressive authoritarian measures. The apparel industry is one of the pillars of Bangladesh's economy. Over the decades, it has provided jobs to millions of people. But a slowdown in this vital sector is now reflecting in the overall health of the nation's economy. In 2023, the apparel industry of Bangladesh was valued at around $1,110 billion. With over 3,500 factories, it serves major global fashion brands. These factories employ over 4 million people, a majority of whom are women. But conditions have become dire for many of the sector's workers. The last few months have seen major unrest in Bangladesh's export-earning ready-made garment, or RMG, industry. In November last year, up to 25,000 garment workers clashed with police in Bangladesh. Rejecting a government-offered pay rise, the workers forced the closure of at least 100 factories outside Dhaka. A government-appointed panel had raised wages by 56.25% for the South Asian nation's 4 million garment factory workers, but the workers were seeking a near tripling of their monthly wages. Violence broke out in the industrial towns of Ghazipur and Ashulia outside the capital after the workers rejected the panel's offer. For almost a decade, Bangladeshi government worker Naeem Pramanik sold shirts and trousers for top Western brands worn by people around the world. But today, the 28-year-old is unemployed and doesn't have money to buy basic necessities for his survival. What was his mistake? Pramanik had taken part in the protests demanding a fair wage. 
I don't have any money to buy food right now. I'm having a tough time. I'm living a miserable life. I only have two kilograms of rice that will last only two days. Then I starve. I don't have any money in my pocket now to survive with my family. I can't buy any good food or clothes for my baby. I just talked about my dreams and spoke to the media. That's why my factory threatened me, saying BGMEA, the intelligence agencies, the police and RAB would take action against me. On November 6th, they kicked me out without any notice. They told me to go to a hideout for one month. The RNG sector workers are demanding a tripling of their legally mandated minimum wages from 8,000 Bangladeshi taka or about $72 to 23,000 taka or about $208. But their demands have largely been unheard and many workers have faced the same fate as Pramanik. About 200 named and 18,000 unnamed garment workers have criminal cases filed against them. Police action and counter-violence have killed about five people. Bangladesh is the world's second largest exporter of fast fashion, or RMG, after China, accounting for 85% of the country's export earnings of $55 billion in 2022. It has a global market share of almost 8%. But this strong sector today seems to be under pressure from the current regime. Sheikh Hasina rejected any further pay hikes for protesting garment workers. But the Prime Minister, her prospects will hinge on how deftly she handles the grievances of the workers and the demands from the domestic RMG sector, while also ensuring big brands deliver on their promises on procurement practices. I think the, the issue that concerns the voters most is uh, the inflation. Uh, you know, it, co the cost of living has gone up uh, enormously. And uh, <clears throat> the lower income groups are suffering very, very poorly. So uh, that the government is giving assurances, the ruling party is giving assurances. Uh, somehow the people don't seem satisfied with the assurances that, that are coming forward. Over the past few decades, Bangladesh initiated significant healthcare reforms and built an extensive healthcare infrastructure. Yet, the journey towards comprehensive healthcare access remains an ongoing endeavor in Bangladesh. Last year, Bangladesh grappled with record deadly outbreak of dengue fever. Hospitals struggled to make space for patients as the disease spread rapidly in the densely populated country. Abu Hassan is still in a state of disbelief and shock. His six-and-a-half-year-old son, Tashfin Ahnaf, died from dengue in July last year. The 43-year-old journalist and father of two other children is distraught at how quickly the tragedy unfolded and how helpless he felt. The night time was very critical and I didn't get any support from the doctors. I went to every department begging for help in every way possible, aside from falling down to their feet. It is outrageous that no doctor was present at the pediatric intensive care unit, which provides critical care in a prestigious institution like Dhaka Medical College and Hospital. For four hours, my son didn't get any treatment here. The record outbreak of dengue fever in Bangladesh, a country of more than 160 million, killed over 1,200 people and infected more than 250,000 last year. Hassan says lack of a coordinated response in controlling mosquito breeding is causing a higher incidence of the disease. The health crisis in Dhaka worsens every day in a city with creaking infrastructure. The infection also spread to the Rohingya refugees who live in bamboo and plastic camps just outside the coastal city of Cox's Bazaar. In 2022, the camp saw over 15,000 cases and at least six deaths.
During her prime ministership, Hasina has been praised for sheltering Rohingyas fleeing persecution in neighboring Myanmar. But things are spiraling out of control for the refugees. On the 2nd of January 2024, a survey by the World Food Programme showed malnutrition in the Rohingya camps in Bangladesh was at its highest since the 2017 influx. Rohingyas have become discouraged as their repatriation has been prolonged and they sense no future in Bangladesh. While Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said her government attached priority to sending back Rohingyas to their homeland Myanmar, the process is taking time. Hasina's biggest critic, the opposition BNP, has said the Rohingya crisis demonstrates a key policy failure. Sheikh Hasina has been in power in Bangladesh since 2008, making her the longest serving woman head of state in history. But Hasina's administration is facing pressure from Western democracies, especially from the United States. The United States, the biggest buyer of Bangladesh's garments, has condemned the violence and limited visas for citizens of the South Asian nation believed to have a role in undermining elections. I don't think that there is an interference uh, by uh, United States at all. The United States, uh, what they are doing, they are just amplifying the voice of majority Bangladesh. Well, overall, uh, the Western countries, especially United States, have been putting in a lot of political pressure. Uh, uh, on government, governance and democracy and human rights. But my question here is, how much of a moral high ground does the United States actually possess now to put pressure on any country uh, on the question of uh, democracy and, and human rights when they turn a blind eye to the election that has been just been held in Egypt, where the presidential candidate, Mr. Sisi, got 89 point something percent of the votes and there was no serious opposition. With scores of opposition leaders in prison in the past few months, including Hasina's rival and former prime minister and leader of the BNP, Khaled Azia, who has been in jail since 2018, the electoral outcome of the 2024 general elections in Bangladesh is more or less predictable. It may not be an exaggeration to say that the winds are blowing in favour of the incumbent Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina.